soldiers of the United Nations Command Security Battalion, Joint Security Area, I'd like to welcome you to Camp Boniface. The United Nations Command is a multinational coalition force which monitors the Korean armistice and helps maintain regional stability in Northeast Asia. The UNC Security Battalion was established in the spring of 1952, originally consisting of five officers and ten enlisted men. We reached our peak strength near the end of the Korean War with over 1,900 soldiers assigned. To place your tour into better context, I'll briefly review the political history of the Korean Peninsula. Prior to World War II, the Japanese had colonized the Korean Peninsula. In the final days of World War II, the Soviet Union accepted the surrender of the Japanese north of the 38th parallel, while the United States accepted the surrender of the Japanese in the south. The 38th parallel was never meant to be a political boundary nor a division of countries. It was merely established to designate areas of responsibility. So in May of 1948, elections were held in the South, and this man, Dr. Sung Moon Ri, was elected the first president of the Republic of Korea. In September of that same year, the Soviet Union appointed Kim Il-sung to be the first premier of communist North Korea. He reigned for approximately 46 years until his death in July of 1994. His eldest son, Kim Jong-il, succeeded him to power. This was to be the first father to son succession of power to ever take place in a communist country. Despite negotiations and attempts to reunify the Korean Peninsula, on the 25th of June, 1950, North Korea launched a massive surprise attack on the South. This ensuing war lasted over three years and cost over two million people their lives. Within one month of the attack, North Korean forces had captured most of the Korean Peninsula. Coalition forces finally stopped the North Korean Army's advance near the city of Busan. Over the next four months, the United Nations Command conducted the Incheon landing and pushed the North Korean forces back to the Yalu River, the border between North Korea and China, at which point the Chinese entered the war and aided the North Koreans in the war effort. The war began to stabilize near the 38th parallel. Although a permanent settlement has not yet been reached, on the 27th of July, 1953, military commanders of the United Nations Command, the Korean People's Army, and the Chinese People's Volunteers signed an armistice or ceasefire agreement to end the fighting. This agreement is still in effect today. This white dotted line represents the military demarcation line, or MDL. Under the provisions of the armistice, all military commanders were ordered to pull back their troops 2,000 meters from the last point of hostile contact, thus creating a four kilometer wide, 241 kilometer long demilitarized zone, or DMZ. Note the location of Seoul and its relationship to the MDL. We are currently just 2.4 kilometers from the MDL and 400 meters from the southern boundary of the DMZ. This is the city of Kaesong, the site of the original armistice talks prior to being moved to the Panmunjom, or what we call the Joint Security Area. Although the DMZ has become one of the most militarized locations in the world, the MDL itself consists of no fortifications. It is simply a series of 1,292 yellow and black counter markers that run from coast to coast and are spaced at 100 to 200 meter intervals. On the southern side, they are labeled in Korean or Hongo at the top and English on the bottom, whereas on the northern side, they are labeled in Korean or Hongo at the top and Chinese or Mandarin on the bottom. Inside of the Joint Security Area, the MDL is more clearly defined by a series of white stakes standing at 1 meter in height and spaced at 10 meter intervals and further extend on through Conference Row by sectioning each of these buildings by a 17 by 5 inch concrete slab. This is the area that you will be visiting today. Notice how the MDL winds its way through the middle of the DMZ and forms a finger inside of the Joint Security Area. Upon arrival here today at Checkpoint 3, you will be surrounded on three sides by Communist North Korea. You will begin your tour here at Camp Boniface, then exit onto the MSR or Main Supply Route, also known as Old Highway 1, for over 50 years, this was the only stretch of highway that connected North and South Korea until the decision was made to open the East and West Transportation Corridors. This is still the only route leading to the JSA for all armistice-related events. On your trip north today, I'll point out Guard Post 240, Observation Post 11, Taesong Dong of Freedom Village, Gijong Dong of Propaganda Village, the Swiss and Swedish Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission Camp, and the former Czech and Polish in the Nessie. I'll highlight a few of these areas in more detail. First, the village of Taesongdong. The UNC Security Battalion is responsible for implementing civil affairs and security within this unique village. We carry out our responsibilities through a security company that guards the village 24 hours a day. During the day, they provide security while the farmers work the fields, and at night, they guard the village itself while the residents sleep. All the residents own modern homes and have rather large allocations of land. However, 
They do live under very severe restrictions. They must be inside the village by nightfall and inside their homes with the doors and windows secured by midnight. 1,800 meters from Taesongdong across the MDL is the village of Gijongdong, or Propaganda Village. It obtained its name due to an extremely large speaker system located throughout the area that until June of 2004 broadcasted propaganda six to 12 hours a day. It could be heard here at Camp Boniface, but mostly at night. <coughs> this propaganda idolized Kim Jong-il to be a great leader and invited the citizens of Taesongdong and the rest of the Republic to defect to the so-called Village of Paradise. However, if one were to defect here, they'll find themselves rather lonely, for this village is mostly uninhabited. We do see people here from time to time who work at the Kaesong Industrial Complex, maintain the upkeep of the buildings, and raise and lower this extremely large North Korean flag. This is one of the largest flags in the world and has an approximate length of 31 meters. This is the second of two flagpoles to ever stand in the village of Gijongdong. In 1981, the Republic of Korea donated a flagpole to the village of Taesongdong, which stood taller than the flagpole in Gijongdong. So the North Koreans quickly responded by building an even taller flagpole. <laughs> Today, the flagpole in Taesongdong stands at 100 meters in height, while the flagpole in Gijongdong stands at over 160 meters in height. As we enter the Joint Security Area, I'll point out the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission Camp. Delegates from Switzerland, Sweden, Czechoslovakia, and Poland originally formed the NNSC. The commission was charged with the investigation of all violations occurring outside of the DMZ. Currently, they work with three delegates, the Swiss and Swedes who stay around, and the Polish who come for the biannual meetings. Visible from checkpoint three, you will be able to see the former Czech and Polish in the SC camp as seen here on your right. And on your left is North Korea's People's Peace Museum. It was constructed in less than 48 hours solely for the signing of the armistice. Also visible from checkpoint three is the Bridge of No Return. The Bridge of No Return obtained its name when Operation Big Switch and Operation Little Switch were conducted. The United Nations Command returned over 82,000 prisoners of war, while the North Koreans and the Chinese returned approximately 13,000. These prisoners were lined up on either sides of the bridge and given the opportunity to cross into the country of their choice. However, once they crossed, they could never return, hence the name. The Bridge of No Return lies on the southern boundary of the Joint Security Area. All the blue buildings you see belong to the United Nations Command or the UNC, while all the red buildings belong to the North Koreans or the KPA. Prior to 1976, this area was considered a neutral location and both guard forces could cross the MDL freely within this area. The KPA took full advantage of this and built four communist guard posts on the southern boundary road while the UNC built none in the north. Note the location of checkpoint four and how it's surrounded on three sides by communist guard posts and effectively isolated from the rest of the Joint Security Area. Soldiers at Checkpoint 3 had limited visibility of Checkpoint 4 due to an extremely large yellow poplar tree that grew in this area. So on the 18th of August, 1976, the UNC dispatched a five-man civilian work detail accompanied by a 12-man security force to conduct a routine tree trimming operation to improve the visibility between these two checkpoints. Upon their arrival, they were met by 28 North Korean guards. Work did begin as scheduled, but after 15 minutes, the North Koreans attacked. This ensuing fight lasted approximately four minutes, and in that time, the JSA company commander, Captain Arthur Boniface, and first platoon leader, First Lieutenant Mark Barrett, were brutally axed to death. To give you a better idea of how outnumbered they were that day, I'll point out three soldiers visible in this photograph. First, it's rather hard to make out, but he's seen here fighting off seven KPA guards. Here you can see the helmet of Captain Arthur Boniface, who was killed in front of his own vehicle. And here you can clearly see a KPA guard wielding an ax at a JSA soldier. This unprovoked act of violence led to a series of special meetings, and it was decided that the actual NBL should separate the two guard forces. Under these new arrangements, there are no more acts of violence until the 23rd of November, 1984 when a Soviet citizen on a North Korean-sponsored tour dashed across the MDL in an attempt to defect to the free world. North Koreans, armed with rifles and pistols, quickly followed in an attempt to kill or capture him. There were approximately 30 North Korean guards located at the northern portion of the sunken garden. The JSA Quick Reaction Force was immediately alerted and able to halt and outflank the North Korean main body. This ensuing firefight lasted approximately 20 minutes 
And in that time, the KK had three men killed and five men wounded, while the UNC had one man killed, Corporal Jang, and one man wounded. The Soviet citizen was protected throughout the firefight and evacuated to Camp Bonfist. On your trip north today, you will see KPA guards. These red armbands state that they are military police. Under the armistice, all armed personnel inside of the DMZ must wear these armbands. However, the KPA no longer do so. They may come down to see our tour today, and we ask that you not communicate with them verbally or non-verbally. We also provide security and assistance for humanitarian operations, such as the repatriation of remains from the Korean War and the delivery of humanitarian aid to the North. We also provide security and assistance for visiting dignitaries and heads of state, such as former president of the United States, George W. Bush, the president of the Republic of Korea, Lee Moon Bak, the prime minister of New Zealand, John Key, the secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, the secretary of defense, Robert Gates, all seen here on tour with Kang Moon Jong. Like these dignitaries, you will be guarded by the soldiers of the security battalion. The soldier on your right is a U.S. Army infantry soldier. They serve, we serve a minimum of 12 months here. The soldier on your left is a Republic of Korea Iraq soldier. They serve a minimum of 24 months here. Both soldiers must possess above average aptitude standards of normal soldiers, as well as have a clean military and civilian record. It is due to all this, the fact that we are the most poorly deployed unit on the Korean Peninsula, and that we stand face to face with our enemies on a daily basis, that the United Nations Command, the Republic of Korea, and the United States Army have given us our model, which we so proudly state, ladies and gentlemen, we truly are in front of them all. Thank you. You're welcome.